Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm finally here. I'm sorry for keeping you all waiting. I'm sorry for keeping my guest waiting. It's bad planning on my part. Uh, so I take, I take the, the whole responsibility of it. Um, it's Natalie from Creative Makers. Nice to see you all. Hello, one person. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'm sitting here with Anna Stump today. Um, first of all, I want to say that, uh, definitely poor planning on my part they took me off the freeway at some point and i had no idea where um i i was gonna go and it delayed the whole thing by i don't know 20 or 30 minutes not an excuse second thing is just real quick uh the the city of monterey park had a shooting last night a mass shooting where 10 people were killed that is a community i grew up in um i went to school there grammar school and we lived there my mom still lives there my sister lives there and that sort of threw me for a loop. So with that being said, gone. <laughs> I'm gonna have to let that go for right now, but we're talking to Anna Stump and we are way out there in the desert today. I I'm sorry, you <laughs> sort of came to the end of the world here. <laughs> Everybody doesn't realize how far 29 Palms is further than Joshua Tree. I know. Every turn, I kept thinking I was on the last turn. And, and here I am, really, with... There's nothing around. It's, yeah. it's a little escape. It is. Yeah. yeah. Very. We're in the country. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeously desolate here. Yep. Most definitely. Yep. All right. So... My guest, Anna, here, has come to me via two avenues. So I met your partner, Ted, because I went and saw a talk that he did at USC. Oh, cool. And, he's, and he showed me your art, and he's like, you have to talk to Anna. She's a much better painter than I am, but talk to her. And I, was, I saw your stuff, and I was like, yes, yes, yes. But then I didn't know, understand that we were also related to this community up here through Joe Alvarez and Aaron Campbell. Mm -hmm. And they had talked to me and they're like, oh, you have to talk to Anna too. Oh, that's <clears> nice. So, so I had, I have you two ways, which seems to be happening more and more lately than I'm having these Everybody's double. Everybody's mess. Yeah. Intermeshed. Yeah. yeah. The communities are so small. The art community. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just start with the, the first and only question that is a big question in them where the conversation goes from there. And do you want me to like talk to, into the camera? Sure, we you, can talk, this in, you can, talk can talk into you the guys. camera, yeah. you can talk to me, it's fine. Okay. I think people are used to seeing my profile and, the, and whatever, whatever, yeah, beautiful profile. <laughs> whatever happens is fine. Okay, so my first and only question is, I want to know what creativity looked like for you as a child. How did it, how did it bubble up? How did it surface? Um, as a child, and I've been thinking about this a lot because I'm, I'm about to do the Live from Joshua Tree uh, desert stories. And so oh. I'm talking about how did I get to the desert. Um, so I've been thinking about my childhood because even though I didn't grow up in the desert, I grew up in San Diego, Chula Vista area. Um, I've always had connections to the desert and that was through my grandparents. And as a child, there were no artists in my family. So a lot of times I think people get to artistry because there are other creative makers that are getting an example. Right. But I didn't have that at all. What I had was my grandparents who loved art and actually collected art. And they collected oh. art here in the desert. So they collected uh, because they had a vacation house in La Quinta in the 1960s. Oh, uh-huh. And, I, and I, as a little girl, I used to go out there but they had collected cowboy art. That's what my grandfather liked, you know, Western art. Yeah. And so, so like Remington, that, that sort that of stuff. That type of stuff, yes. Okay. It so was realism. Very, very, very paintings of cow, cow, the desert. Uh, cow, John yes. Wayne. Yes, yes, yes. John that Wayne. sort of thing. Yeah. And native, some Native American types of stuff. Um, and they were the ones who encouraged me, you know, who took me to, they took me to museums, they would take me to galleries, and there was art all around in their house. And then sometimes art would overflow and they'd have a, you know, a, can just, do you want this to, to my mom? Do you want this painting in your house? So we started having paintings in our house. So original <laughs> art So it got like around. shared. It did, it did. And my grandfather, 
he was a very good collector and he collected, he had a really good eye, which was so surprising. He was, he was a lawyer, you know, and mm -hmm. he, no, no arts connection, but, um, he put, helped put nine grandchildren through college by selling the art oh my after gosh. it appreciated. He had bought some really good things. So, yeah. Oh so my I gosh. How lucky. Things. So this burned your, I don't know, desire. I did visual art in, in, um, in elementary school and all through junior high and high school, definitely. And I also did dance um, and I played the piano. So we did all kinds of sort of music and, and then, um, but I, they didn't, nobody encouraged me to become an artist because that was a scary thing. So right. That's yeah. taboos in yeah. some, in some families. Oh, most, worlds. I think it still is. I think, um, I think that because I have taught so many years, um, I think young people have a really hard time telling their family, I want to have, be an art major, especially because I taught at the community college level. And so you've got, um, you know, kids who are either coming from immigrant families or they're coming from families that, you know, maybe don't have a lot of money and yeah. their parents want them to be practical. Right. And, and successful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it, I always had a really keen interest in like saying, okay, how can artists be entrepreneurs? How can we earn money? Um, how, how can you tell your parents yes, I can be an artist and I'm not going to starve. Right. So that's always been a really big interest of mine. And, and so as I moved through my, my life, I've always thought, I, in the end, when I think back, I'm like, in another world, I might have been gone into to business. Mm -hmm. you know. But I think all artists are business people. We are small entrepreneurs and we have to think that way. It's, it's funny because I think of you that way because I was reading your bio and, and all the things you did and I was like, you're not just an entrepreneur, you're an artrepreneur. You <laughs> yes, <know? laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was my description of you when I was like mm -hmm. describing what you did mm -hmm. because you just have your fingers in lots of things. Yeah, yeah. And that's definitely what I would try to teach my students. You know, lots of different things and your career is probably going to shift mm -hmm. and and don't be scared of that. You know, I think that we grew up thinking, okay, I've got to develop a style and I've got to paint only one way because that's what we saw from, you know, all through the 20th century. Right. These artists who, you know, Jackson Pollock did drip paintings and then that's what he did. And that's, that's what you're known for. And if you did something else, a gallerist is going to say, don't do it because it's right. going to Nobody wreck your knows brand. You. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and now I know that that is not what... Uh, have, I think the postmodern art world is much bigger than that and understands. But it is interesting to think about like, okay, how is my career shaped and how is it changing and how, how did the pandemic change me? You know, right. and, and lots of people, I think, yeah. change their art. So, okay, so going back, so then as a child, did you see this artwork on the walls and then you were just inspired to yeah. duplicate it or mm -hmm. mess with it? Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. always loved Painting, drawing. I'm I'm definitely a two D artist. Although it's interesting because what's I did, a two D artist? You know, I make flat things. Oh, okay. I, I don't make sculpture. Oh, okay. I, but I make spaces. I definitely make spaces, and I think that has to do with being a dancer and understanding and choreographer and understanding how do people move through a space. And so my big project, Mojave Land, definitely I think of that whole thing as my artwork. Although I am taking and inviting artists to design for me and I'm sort of directing them, I feel that that is my art. That is my, because it's a social practice. So I am a social practitioner now first, as opposed to a painter. I'm still a painter. But, You're still a painter. Yeah. Right. But you've sort of got your arms embraced around a bunch yeah. of other things that include other yeah. artists. Yeah. That's really interesting. Okay. So, so let's talk through sort of like the, the beginnings of your art world. Um, in terms of like putting, making stuff, finding out what you like to paint and how you got the word out about what you did and how, how did people find you? How did they buy your art? So I studied painting in college. I oh, so to, you did? I did. Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I went to Occidental College, which is in Los Angeles. It's a liberal arts school. It's very, very small, close to where I live. Yeah, Eagle Rock. Yeah. And I, I think my, my family wanted me, uh, me to be a teacher because the women in my family were teachers. The men were lawyers. The women were teachers. Mm. 
very, you know, traditional type thing. And um, so my, and my mom was a kindergarten teacher. And, uh, but then when I said I was going to be an art major, they finally said, okay. Um, and they were gritting their teeth the whole they time. Were, they were, they were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I worked in, and because I was doing dance, I also worked in the theater and I did some set painting and, um, and I think I sort of flailed around a bit in my twenties. I did a lot of different jobs. Um, I, I was a professional ballroom dancer for four years. That, and that's how I earned my money. That is yeah. amazing. In my twenties, it was fun. Hard. It's hard work because you're 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 dancing on on your feet eight hours a day. Right. It's it's, it's not easy. Uh, and I sort of knew I was not going to continue with that because physically it's too hard on your body and yeah. So um, and then eventually I did go back to graduate school. I thought, okay, I need to have more skills. I did not feel fully prepared by Occidental College. Um, and, and I was never encouraged to go to graduate school right away, um, which was possibly a mistake on my part. Like a lot, you know, but you know, what do you, it could have, should have, would have, you know. Um, I have a question about Occidental. I never think of it as an art school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were like seven, we had seven majors in my class, right. but it was and very small. But well, I also went to Art Center. So Art oh, Center's right next to right. it. So they had a concurrent program. So, oh, okay, so were they, were they melded? No, you could just go and like and take classes because okay. we didn't have enough classes that to, to take. Oh, so. interesting. Yeah, so they, so they had practical skills between the two. There was like you know this is a painting class and this is a ceramics class and whatever yeah. whatever. Okay, yeah. and I know I think they do have um, uh, a nice art program now at Occidental. I, when I was there, it was um, a smaller. It was pretty small, mm -hmm. and the teachers there was a teacher who was almost retired, so he was a really old school guy. Well, being able to take classes concurrently at Art Center, though, is a big plus because that is such a major school yeah. in terms of art. Yeah. And I've interviewed many artists from Art Center, mm -hmm. you know, big deal people. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. So then I went back to um, graduate school in my 30s, uh, early 30s, and uh, went to SCSU. And Which, uh, SCSU? SDSU, San Diego oh, State. Oh, San Diego State. Okay. Yeah, San Diego State University. And they are a big craft school. So, oh. But I was in the painting department. But and I was pregnant. So I had uh, a child at the beginning of grad school. And by the time I finished, I was also pregnant. With, I was pregnant with my second child. And so I didn't paint because... The chemicals the would fumes, not be, yeah. have been good because um, I was using oil paints at that time. I was just gonna so ask, I mainly yeah. did performance art oh. and um, digital uh, video. So I learned the digital side of things because that was a, a safer thing for me to do. When you did your performance art, did it involve being pregnant? Yes. That is so cool. It did. It did. Yeah, I did it. My most infamous performance, which I actually... Um, I, I studied under Eleanor Anton, too, because she was at UCSD, and so I was able to take some classes with her, and she was wonderful. She's a great performance artist. Um, but I, um, on stage, I was, I had been breastfeeding my, my older son, and I pumped my breasts on stage and then passed the milk out to the audience. <gasps> they freaked. <laughs> 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 Oh my God! Because this was also, you know, AIDS was still around, and yeah. people thought you could get AIDS through breast milk. So some people didn't drink it. That's fine. I don't care. That is so interesting. Yeah. So do you have a tally of like how many people actually drank it and how many people just passed? Uh, I mean, would you it, say was, it? it was it was not. I mean, it was I a mean, tiny like, little bit. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. A, it that, wasn't like that, a blurging of breast milk. Right. I mean, this is a whole. Yeah. That is really quite a yeah. moment. And then, you know, I think I, so, so my um, artistic career sort of has three prongs to it. So I definitely am a painter. Mm -hmm. I like to make objects. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a realist. I'm mm -hmm. not a, um, I'm, I call myself more like an expressionist. So my, my work doesn't look real, but it is things, you know. Right. Um, it's, it's less abstract. It's not abstract. It's not abstract. Um, but I'm also a teacher. So then after I finished graduate school, I taught for almost 30 years. Now, grammar school, high school, college? College. college. Yeah, so I was, I was a college professor. I never got tenure. Um, 
So I moved around. I had a Fulbright. I taught in Turkey several times. So I was. I oh, was that's your connection Turkey. to Turkey. Mm -hmm. I, I saw that in your bio. Yeah. I was wondering how yeah. that happened. That was a, a really wonderful experience. I actually lived there three times, and each time I taught at the university level. And, um, and you... I did teach some kids in pro some programs, and then I taught in prison too. Oh wow! So that was interesting. Wait a minute. So, um, in in your teaching career, were you mad that you never got tenure? I was disappointed. I was. And do you um, think not getting tenure has to do with the fact that you're a woman? Because I, no. whenever I hear that, I'm always like, mm. no, it didn't have to do with being a woman. It had to do with my timing. Oh. So what happened was I, um, and I had kids. So I had that, that part did have, because when you have kids, you can't uproot your family and say, I'm going to, I got a job in Kansas. Right. Well, let's go to Kansas. You know, that right. involves ripping them up from where they're going to school yeah. and another Changing person. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what happened was I was I was finalist for several positions in San Diego uh -huh. um, where we were and I didn't get it. And I was like, OK, that's all right. I was a finalist. It means I'm in the running and I'm a good teacher uh, and I could teach a lot of things. Um, and then I, I got the Fulbright. I left for a year and I came back and it was the recession, 2008. Oh. And that's like, okay, there's no jobs. There right. were no it was jobs really hard. for several years. And then I got too old. I got too old. And I totally understand that. You know, like, you nobody, think you got too old, or the industry thought you got too old? The industry. Because, and I, I get it because it's so hard to get a position. It, yeah. At the university level, at, at the at the even the community college level, they have to fight for that position. And if you hire somebody who's late forties, by that time I was mid forties. Yeah, you're only going to get twenty years from them. If you hire somebody who's twenty five or thirty, right, you have a position that's going to be stable. So yeah, I just yeah, I I got to. I I have so many opinions about ageism. Mm -hmm. and, and being female, you know. But I, I get it. Because I get they, it too, like, but I don't like it. Somebody, I don't like you know, it. Yeah, yeah. In the end, it, it just, it was the way it was. And in the end, it's a blessing because then I realized that that was the point where I realized, okay, I am never going to get tenure. I am going to keep teaching. Uh, and it, it sort of was stable or not stable. And the main schools I taught at in San Diego were... San Diego City College and Grossmont College. Mm -hmm. uh, one inner city, one in the suburbs, but you know, service serving uh, kids who really needed me. You know, they were, these weren't wealthy kids. Right. They weren't wealthy students. And, and I felt like, I started to feel like, okay, at least I can um, do really good work and feel like I'm giving back to the community because I'm helping yeah. these students and advising them. And I taught art, art, art entrepreneurship. I taught um, introduction to art. I taught lots of studio classes. I taught, in the end, I taught in the digital department at Grossmont College, um, digital painting and animation and stuff like that. Um, and then I just felt like, okay, in my own career, now it's time to step up the entrepreneurial stuff. So then pushing more, looking more, you know, looking at the gallery scene in San Diego, which is pretty small. Mm -hmm. And then realizing, okay, no, got to, got to focus more on LA. And so, and then my relationship with Ted, he's really entrepreneurial. So Ted, Ted's my partner and, um, Ted he, Mayer or my, Meyer. Mm -hmm. Last week I kept calling him Ted Clark. I don't know why. <laughs> so Ted Meyer, um, also an interview. You can look it up later. Yeah, yeah, and he's so he's been so supportive of me. Every crazy idea I have, and and uh, just supporting me, it's amazing. Um, so and then so I really started to push um, working in LA, and I've also always been very collaborative in terms of liking to work with other artists, and so. I had a really wonderful collaboration in my 20s with um, another choreographer, um, uh, Ippolito Rostano, and I'm, I'm still close friends with her. Um, so that was a wonderful collaboration. And then I had a collaboration that I did in San Diego with a dancer and a musician. 
um, which we called it, we called ourselves a jazz trio, minor mm -hmm. trio, where we, we would do live performance, she would dance, uh, I would paint, and there was a musician who sort of uh, was a jazz musician who would work off of us. So that was a really wonderful thing. I established a, a women's group in San Diego. Um, it has about 60 members now. Wow. Yeah, it's called the uh, Feminist Image Group, um, FIG for short, and probably did, I probably led about 12 exhibitions over a period of 10 or 15 years, mostly performance-based. Wow. So, yeah. And that was that was really a wonderful thing to be collaborating with this group, big group of women. It's so interesting to me that um, it seems to me that being pregnant actually shaped your career so much because it really yeah. moved you in the direction from painting all the time or painting mostly to being mostly a performance artist. Yeah, I mean, and I I always meld the, the two. So, for example, one of the performances that I just really loved that we did in, with Fig was we did this performance called Gift. So the whole idea was, okay, women are always giving. You know, it's it's really, it's a thing that we do. Right. And so we decided, well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how we give and is this the right thing to do as artists. And so we did this performance in that during the opening, every person who showed and there were probably 30 of us had to give something and so the performance was just this mass of little um areas where people were either giving away little drawings they did or they were we had helen redmond i was just looking at this picture of her she just held someone's hand she gave the gift of holding someone's hand oh, and wow. so the people sat down Held, held hands and sort of just like were there. It was a su it was such an interesting. What a beautiful sort of thing though yeah. that everybody, their their gift looked different. It wasn't necessarily yeah. an object. No, no. But a feeling it could have been. Or yeah, it could have been like a, a, a um, hug, a capacity, a, a capacity to uh -huh. do something for somebody. Yeah, yeah. Some people did little drawings of people and gave them that sort of thing. And then another performance we did, I which love I this loved, idea. was we did, this was a very early fig performance. It was called Feeder. And we, as women, um, were in a gallery and we all had different kinds of food. And we fed the guests like babies. <gasps> and so that was really interesting because the women were so uncomfortable, but the men loved it. The men, oh my God. you're you're going back to feeding like a baby, and then there's like a sexual connotation too. It was oh, super interesting. That, that 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 simultaneously delights me and makes me repulsed. Yeah. yeah. Well, some people did like a, a spoonful of vodka. You know, oh I, I or you know said like said here have a drink of this. You know, or and then I I fed pudding because I you know that sort of, um, sort of it, it, it was a really great performance. Um, yeah, so these stuff like that. The, wow, these are things, you know, it's it's so not um, tan, tangible, you know, painting on the wall art. No. This is about feeling and yeah. the fleetingness of it, you know. Experiential stuff, yeah. which I really think is powerful. Very. Mm -hmm. I don't think about it that much because I don't operate that way, but when I hear about it, then I'm like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So FIG still exists. Um, I passed the leadership on to somebody else who's, yeah. who's, but I'm still involved, even though I don't live in San Diego anymore. Um, and then on the opposite side, I have a, a partnership, a wonderful partnership right now that has been going on for the past 10 years with Daphne Hill. And she and I do collaborative work. Um, I saw this artwork yeah. over at Gustav's place last right. week. Yeah. And that that stuff just blew me away. Yeah. And right now we're in transition. We're probably going to be changing up what we do a little bit because we've been doing it for 10 years. We've sold a lot of it. We've always supported our studio. We <clears> had <throat> we started out having studios in um, go, um, North Park in San Diego, and then we moved to Barrio Logan. And then... We has, we still maintain a studio in San Diego, but we're gonna we're phasing that out, and we have a studio in Palm Springs now. So Daphne's finally moving here to the desert, right? And then we'll be able to work 
you know, one or two days a week together because we do collaborative paintings. Right, because I was asking Gustav about it. I was like, what do they do? Does, does somebody start it and then they just pass it to the next person and they do something and then it gets passed again and, yeah. and that's how you guys do it? That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I, I Layered, love that. layers and it, yeah. Because it's, it's, been a it's um, painting and then resin, right? And then, yeah. then painting and then resin and then yeah. painting and then resin. And that <clears throat> is purely, that, that work is purely commercial. Although we really enjoy the process and mm -hmm. people are interested in the process, um, it's pure, they're purely beautiful paintings. Yeah, to they're just sell. imagery. They're to beautiful. Sell. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what that's so that's really interesting. And I, I mean, I think that I've had the most commercial ex success through we call that that company is called Hill and Stump. Um, she's Daphne Hill, I'm on the stump. Um, and we, but now we're sort of figuring out how to move past that and then we'll figure out a new thing because we really enjoy we're really close friends and we really enjoy working together and then we like enjoy showing together so so yeah and um my own painting practice um has generally been on canvas or um on panel and then when i moved here to the desert um we moved here to start an artist residency. Right. How, how long have you lived here now? Almost five years. Almost well, five years, okay. We bought the place five years ago. Mm -hmm. We couldn't live here in the beginning because it was just it needed trash. Work. It needed help. Yeah, yeah. But um, we moved full time during at the beginning of the pandemic because mm -hmm. I just was like, I'm out of the city, forget it. Were you living in LA? San Diego. Oh, still. you were living in San yeah, Diego. Because I still okay. had kids and I still had one kid in high school. Mm. So it was not good to leave. But then high school stopped. So I just scooped him up and took him here. So he lives here now with you? No, he's in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's all right. He's moved in on. college now. Moved yes. on. He's he's at uh, Cal Arts. He's my oh. artist. Oh, my younger one is an artist. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course right. he is. Um, yeah. While you were teaching, were you continuing your own practice while you were doing that as well? Yes. Yeah. Always. Always. I always never put it down. A studio outside of my home, um, and. That's one thing that's different now because now here in the desert, our studio is, it's roves around the property depending on how hot it is and yeah. how cold it is because the weather here is sort of severe. Yeah, it's but now we do have a, an outside studio in Palm Springs too. So, so, but, but I always maintained that out, outside studio because I felt as a woman that it was important to not have to pe bring people into your home to see your work. Oh, so, I never thought about it that way. I was yeah. thinking about it in the way that, you know, when when you work at home, sometimes you never get to the work you need to do because there's all of the ways the work you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. your kids calling you, the dinner needs to be made. Definitely whatever. when I had kids, that was super important yeah. to be able to go to the studio, have that time that I'm just there. And also the connection with other artists in the studio complexes. I always tried to pay attention to that, you know, where I chose to have studios. Um, yeah, but I, uh, yeah, I think that's important. To can you, space. just for the sake of people listening and watching, can you talk a little bit about what you look for in a studio? Like what kind of space are you looking for? Uh, location, mm -hmm. definitely. It, you need to be in that spot where other artists are. So, oh, so, so okay, so that's valuable my, to you. Yeah, it's very valuable. So in San Diego, my studios sort of followed because artists get pushed out of neighborhoods. Yeah, right? of course they do. They make so, it beautiful, mm -hmm. and then everybody's like, "Oh, look how beautiful it is it around here! Yeah. I want to live here." And and if they get pushed out because it's too expensive. Yep, yep and they yep. move on to the next place. Yeah. So North Park got too expensive. They raised the rent. We moved down to Barrio Logan. We had this amazing studio in Bar Barrio Logan. I loved it. Rents went up. Okay. Went back to went to Golden Hill, and and you know it's the same with LA. Artists just get pushed from neighborhood to yeah. neighborhood as they get gentrified. Um, so yeah, I look for and now we're down in Palm Springs because of that. There were some artists that were nearby. So what happens in Palm Springs is there's too much retail space. So little strip malls are being taken over by artists. And a friend of mine who's a very wonderful, lovely person, Linda Keeler. Um, she was in the strip mall. I said, you know what, Linda, if something ever comes up, let me know. And something came up. I'm like, okay, got it. So that's where you met Gustav. So Gustav, oh, okay. Daphne, Ted, so and I share that space. So that space is your spirit space. Yeah. 
That makes sense. And yeah, a, a yeah. Thrift strip mall is a great idea. And it, it's like... It's got parking. Well, and it's like instant party atmosphere. Yeah. You yeah. know? Like, so we could go from, from place to place when you have an opening. Yeah, easily. So, yeah. So, I'm and I'm, you know, trying to break into the Palm Springs market. It's a little hard because the high desert is not that close. You know, right. I have to... It's an hour to drive there. But I can spend the night in the studio and... Um, and I just got into the Palm Springs Art Fair, which oh, is coming up. Yeah, I got juried into a, a show by Frederick Fulmer, so that's exciting. Um, with some work that I have been doing this past summer. Um, in the heat of the, when it was 115 out here, I was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I have to stay inside and do this little small work. That part's so, hard. Yeah. Yeah, working in these elements. Because yeah. when it finally isn't too hot, it often gets too cold Yeah, to be outside and do your thing. Yeah. So the work that I'm doing up here, it's there's I've got a little piece that I can show oh, people. Well, so good. so basically, I I um, I often take uh, pieces of metal that I found yeah, here so this is in a the spade, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, oopsies, Ted's got a yeah. There we go. Um, and I collage and paint on them, and I do these little jackrabbit homesteads, and I'm really interested in. Um, I've been for several years so doing beautiful. work. I did work about the border when I was in San Diego. I posted one of your pieces, mm -hmm. one of the pinata pieces. This yeah, morning. things flying in the sky. And so then out here, what flies in the sky are helicopters because of this huge marine base that's here. Right. So a lot of my work is, has to do with the military and um, sort of like the militarized desert and sort of the idea of you know, there's this huge expanse of sky, and a lot of times people think, well, there's nothing in the desert, so what does the military do? Use it for a bombing range, which is basically what this whole thing is. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of um, my work. So it's on metal. Um, some of it's small, like this. Some of it's... Is this acrylic large. or, or oil? It's on acrylic. I, 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 acrylic. I don't use oil much anymore. No. Because of the fumes and stuff, or just yeah, and I just got away ease. from it. And I use um, gouache a lot of yeah. times, also. Um, so yeah, and then my my paintings that I'm doing that I did for that just got into the Palm Springs Art Fair were um, a series of smoke trees. So smoke, like people think, oh well, the Joshua tree is mystical, and it is. Um, but there's this tree that grows out here that is called a smoke tree. And it is very hard. You can't plant it. You know, it's, it, it grows, it's wild. Like, I would oh. love to have some on this property, but you but can't But you can't get move it. them? Mm -mm, you cannot move them. They have this really long root. And they, um, they, they look just sometimes just deader than dead, just like falling over. And, but then, or, or sometimes half of it will be alive and half of it will be dead. But when it blooms in, it blooms in the hottest months in June and July. It it um, has these purple flowers and it gets covered with bees. Just like you come up to it and it's like bees are all over it, and um, it's just this beautiful thing. And it blooms only for a few days and then it's gone. And it, they sort of look like they have smoke. You know, they call it smoke tree because it's like the 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 leaves are actually thorns. Oh. So they, um, it just looks very mystical and. I mean, you're gonna have to point one out to. There's. Are they're there, on the side of the road. They yeah. are okay. Yeah. I'm gonna they, have to look for yeah. one. in washes. Because I don't think washes. I've ever thought yeah. about it before. And there was this connection, so the, so there's a conceptual element. There's almost always a conceptual element to my my work. Um, when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. my grandparents were buying this this um, Western art. My grandfather revered this group called the Cowboy Artists of America. Oh, yeah. And he told me, and I don't really know if this is true, but uh, he told me that they had a test to get into the Cowboy Artists of America, which was <laughs> to paint a smoke tree that looked like it was on fire or on smoky. Oh, right? wow. So, because it's a hard tree to paint. Mm -hmm. And there actually is something called the Smoke Tree School. And um, this is going to be worth me looking at. So up and yeah, with. but then my grandfather said, "Well, you know, even if you got you, even if you could paint that well that you could ever paint a smoke tree, uh, you wouldn't be able to get into the Cowboy Artists of America because they don't let women in, <gasps> and they don't. And they, they, I looked at their website; they still don't have any women in there. 
and they're all, all old guys, old white guys. But anyway, so I made this, I said, okay, that's it. I'm gonna paint 100 smoke trees. So I've, I've got 100 paintings done. Every tree is different, all different media, gouache, acrylic, or um, I've got marker, ink, mm, colored pencil. I'm just doing, some of them are drawings and some of them are paintings. And I'm sorry, I don't have any here. I was just gonna Palm say, Springs. do you have any that we can see? They're in Palm Springs. Um, <laughs> there are some, some of them are on my Instagram. Um, but the subtitle is called 100 Smoke Trees or Fuck You Cowboy Artists of America. <gasps> and I was going to scrawl that really big on every painting. And then everybody was like, no, 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 don't, don't do that on every painting because you won't be able to sell them. Because they are sort of saleable. They're very pretty. I might amazing. buy one. <laughs> so I said to people, I, I wrote it on a few of them and I said, okay, if you want me to, I will write that on there, big or small, or I'll leave it off. So, because I don't think some people might want to not want to have that on their wall. They they might not, but sort of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's what's going to be in the in the um, in the art fair, which is very nice. So it's a, it's a pretty good fair. Yeah, no, I know, I know it. It is a good fair. A friend of mine's always participating in that one. Yeah, or I think it's that one. Yes. Yeah. So that's one. So um, yeah. And then my other big project besides, well, the residency, I think of that as an artwork. It's a social practice artwork. And that's really sort of my teaching, even though I retired from teaching, um, which I'm very happy to have done. Um, you know, when the re when residents come here, I don't teach them, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a subtle there's, sort of conversation that goes along and we talk about their work and that's part of why they come. So tell me about the, the residency. How do you get into it? Does it cost money? You know, what, what do you expect from it? How long is it? So what happened was when my kids finally grew up and went away to college mm -hmm. and were, didn't need me so much anymore, Ted and I started going on residencies ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we went to one in Ireland. Oh. And then, and it was amazing. It's called Kill Rillig. And then um, I went to a feminist residency in northern France the next summer. Mm -hmm. And then at this point, we're like, we want to start a residency. This is sort of an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we, I had, when I was in college, I just thought residencies were for very famous artists. And they were hard to get into. I thought residencies, you had to be chosen for them. And so they, they were free. They different. were free sort of things, but you had to pay in terms of your artwork. So every residency is completely different. Mm. And they run the gamut from being, yeah, you they're not open to the public. You are chosen and it's a free month or two months or a year, mm -hmm. you know. Or in residencies can run the com gamut from being completely free or getting a stipend mm -hmm. to you paying quite a lot of money. Yeah. So, and that's why we started going on residencies ourselves to see how are these run. Every residency is different. It's run different administration. It's different physical settings. Most you do need some land. Then mm -hmm. that's why we came here because mm -hmm. we couldn't think of having a residency in LA in a city. Right, it would be really hard unless yeah. you were really lucky. Yeah. So we went to Ireland, France, and then I went. We went to one in Michoacan in Mexico. Oh wow! And each, you know, taking notes besides participating in the right. residency, how how do they financially run? Yeah. Um, how do people interact with the residents? What's the living situation? Mm -hmm. What's the eating situation? How long are they? Blah, blah, blah. So we sort of, uh, we started our residency and we just, in the, in the <clears> beginning, <throat> we just had people in our guest room and we weren't here full time. Oh, uh -huh. So they were staying in the house while mm -hmm. we were gone. Mm -hmm. But then we realized, no, no, no. So we took part of our house and sort of blocked it off. And so residents stay in their own little separate area mm -hmm. of our house. Mm -hmm. um, and our residency, it does have a nominal nightly fee. It's $40 a night. Mm -hmm. um, because mainly to help us pay for air conditioning and heating when, because the weather's pretty extreme. Right. And then I have to tell you, the worst part of r running a residency is cleaning the residency. So oh, really? I do not, I have to do it, but I feel like, I need to be paid a little bit to yeah, clean this residency, course. you know. And we did start out with shorter times, but now we have a 10-day minimum. Because to come here and expect, like, 
in a week you can really get your bearings and, and do produce. something. Uh, you, and we don't require you to produce anything. Oh, really? We do not have that. So it could be just like a sabbatical from from whatever your life is. Yeah, and you could just be writing and thinking. And, and we've had people who have like come here and they thought they were going to do something and then they realized, oh, yeah, i I got to rethink this. And I've, we've had a musician come here twice who so just basically practices. I was going to say, this is uh, my husband, Dave Zally. I bet he would love to yeah. do this for a period of time. And yeah, because be you can here. practice in the middle of the night here. Yeah. No one, you, we go out to the barn. and Because yeah. we have a barn. And that's where people can use it as their studio or their practice room. And um, he just, we'd hear this amazing music coming out of the barn in the middle of the night. It was so lovely. But no, he's not bothering anybody because there's no one here. So at this point, how many people have you hosted? We've been doing it. This is our third year. Uh -huh. So probably 10 or 12 per year. And we only have one person at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, or a couple. We can fit a couple. It's a little tight for a couple, though. To tell yeah, the we've had um, a mother and son come out, and a lot of people at this point are coming back for a first residency, and then they come back the next year. And we've had three, two or three people come every year. So do do people ever show you the work that they've produced while they're here? Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they can. Are you blown away by it, or I mean, are you intrigued? Oh, I mean, how do you, I, I'm sure, but yeah. I mean, how do you feel about it when you see it? Oh, I, 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 it runs the gamut. So some people are making physical objects, mm -hmm. which they um, will take away with them. Or and some people are writer. Like we have a writer here now. Mm -hmm. We have we've had, and he's also a photographer. Um, we've had photographers. If we can, if they want to, we can set up a little bit of a an exhibition. But it's hard to get people to come here. And also, in 10 days, that's a lot of pressure to put up on yourself. Right. Um, but I have had um, people have exhibitions at Mojave Land, mm -hmm. because I have a little space that I can show art. Mm -hmm. um, some people do installate permanent or temporary installations on the land. Oh. Um, so they will do, we have a, a labyrinth that uh, an artist did um, in the backyard, and that's permanent. We've had a, um, I have a really amazing uh French artist Michelle Guyou who comes every year and she does temporary installations in the desert that eventually blow away um, out of sticks and rocks and art. things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I so, love how yeah. there's a conceptual element to all of this. I think most people are very affected by the landscape and the yeah. space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really interesting. I see that there's um, people that here. Questions. Let's just see what's going on. Let me just get. I have to get a drink of water. Go get right your back. water. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I don't want to read these. Oh, Joe's a, Joe is watching. Joe oh, Alvarez. So say hi, Joe. <laughs> she says hi. Again, since I'm, I just want to apologize again for the tardiness of this interview. Oh, but, Do you want some water, Natalie? Yes, water would be great at this point. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read your questions, but I'm just waiting for. Anna to come back so that she can hear what you are all saying. And my eyes won't stop watering. It's dry. This is like me being at home. This is what I drink out of at home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we found these here. So we found so much junk here and almost everything we tried to say was usable you know? and like these these encyclopedias were here these are from 1930 when the house was built oh my and gosh. they have notes in them because they were homeschooling their kids oh my gosh i know oh Amazing. my gosh this place is was built in the 30s 1930 yeah. wow yeah i didn't know anything that old um okay so Clifton's just saying no worries about me being late sandy garcia is watching uh, an amazing folk artist in um los angeles laura fratino cottrell is here Chris Zambone is watching. Cl and Clifton says, sounds like my kind of OG girl. Then he put girl. Uh, <laughs> What's meant, OG? Um, old gangster. <laughs> <laughs> LaDonna is watching. Doreen is watching. Maya is watching. Dale was watching. Um, Clifton says, she is definitely enigmatic. That's a compliment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and don't ever, oh, and now, he, now he's talking to me because I was apologizing about being late. Okay, no apologies then. Um, Tell me about Mojave Land and what you're doing because this is, 
I don't know why I, I was thinking, is it a golf course? Mm -hmm. It is a golf course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> uh, Joe was talking to me about it, and but we the word golf never came up. Ah. So I, I wasn't quite sure. It came up, but like I said, it wasn't the focus. So tell me about Mojave Land. So after we were here for a couple years, um, I realized, oh, the residency it's happening and that was easy I mean, it, it just sort of sm was you, very you, smooth you got it yeah got I was it. like this is great uh, but you know what this is not enough for to keep me busy because I am like sort of a busy person yeah and I had retired from teaching right and um, so I started to think about like oh I, I need another project I need a, another big project here in the desert and I sort of like this town and I think I want to stay here. And so um, I was thinking, you know, everybody's like, oh, let's open an art gallery. And I knew I did not want to open an art gallery because That's, it's so tough. To it's a hard them. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, whenever people say, oh, galleries, they're so awful. I'm like, are you kidding me? They, uh, these are, those are passion product, projects. They are putting all their money and time and, and it's often so difficult and they're just trying to sell work and you know and it's right. hard it's it's, really it's hard. a hard position too as a gallery owner because if you have an idea of what's going to work for your community in terms of sales and then you have artists that come with things that may or may not fit into that thing it's a hard thing to say no to them or try and regroup them or yeah. you know what i mean yep yeah yep. yeah i mean I, I, not a job what, i want i never am offended when I approach a gallery and I, I never would never approach a gallery that I didn't think that my work would, would do well in. in. Yeah. But that if they say to me, yeah, I just, I can't, that your work is not going to sell. I'm like, I totally get that. They may yeah. need to keep their <clears throat> doors open, you know? Right. So I never, I'm never offended. Um, so anyway, I was like, okay, not an art, not an art gallery, like, you know, an art center, but you know, uh, there, there actually is a lovely little art center here in, in 29 Palms. Um, I don't want to like make competition for that center. And then w what is big out here, because this is a rural community, is sports. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, what about combining art and sports? And I was driving with my son on the freeway and we passed a miniature golf course. And I was like, that's it. Miniature golf designed by artists. And then I started researching it, and it is a thing. I am not inventing this. At oh, all. it is a thing. No, it is. A I thing. didn't even it know. Yeah, yeah. So I've been visiting some of them. They're not in Southern California too much. There's mm -hmm. several in Northern California. Mm -hmm. um, there's some in San Francisco and the Bay Area, uh, which I've gone to, and they're fun. Um, I just went to Minneapolis, St. Paul, to one called Can Can Wonderland, which is definitely something I've, I'm modeling my place on. Because they're very supportive of artists. Um, they're inside, though, and I'm outside. So basically, my idea was get a piece of land and make some miniature golf course, make some, some holes, and each hole is designed by a different desert artist. Mm -hmm. So Joe yeah. is one of my designers. Joe Alvarez. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and very excitingly, Joe and I, because um, his, his style is so wonderful, um, and his, the, just the way he paints and his, the way his mind works. Um, I said, okay, we, do you want to like make a proposal for the Mexicali Biennial? And we got in. Right. So we are now de designing a portable hole, which will be installed in the fall at the Calexico, um, uh, you, uh, school. The San Diego state has a Calexico, um, outpost like an uh, annex yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so they have a gallery there and so we're gonna have the art the the hole is in gonna be in the gallery playable oh my gosh yeah 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 so it'll be it'll be really fun so yeah so then I just was like okay I'm gonna de design this whole almost like a little amusement park that's all completely designed by artists that was my idea and it's a huge project. It's a very, I can't, very huge okay. project. Okay, how many holes are there? Now I have 13. 13 holes. 13 holes. And so I, I bought a piece of commercial land uh -huh. to put this on. Because part of the problem up here in the high desert is people have land and they want to do something with it. And they make these fantastic places, but they're on 
they're zoned residential. And mm -hmm. so you cannot really ever make a performing arts space or an art, mm -hmm. you know, they do it, but they're You're doing it. You're not supposed to. Right, right. So it's I was the, like. It's flying under the radar. Right. And I was <clears> like, I want to um, do it right. And then I was like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. No idea. Uh, because commercial real estate development is, is sort of crazy. And so the city sort of turned the blind eye for about a, for my first year. But then I got a little grant. So that's the other thing. I have a nonprofit sponsor. So I'm under the Arts Connection, which is the San Bernardino Arts Council. Mm -hmm. And they are my sponsor, my, my fiscal sponsor. So I can apply for grants. Oh, this is a really interesting mm -hmm. way to work the whole thing. Yeah. And I always thought... Public that, art, people. Public art. Right. I always thought I want to have both... I knew that eventually I would have to earn money with this place. I haven't done it yet, but it would be <laughs> there. You can have a for-profit business that has a nonprofit arm. So if I, for example, kept that nonprofit teaching part of it mm -hmm. separate, mm -hmm. I can continue the nonprofit and still have a for-profit business. That's eventually way, the way I may work it. Mm -hmm. I do not know. But for now, I, my project is a completely a community-based project. It's free. All I do is pour thousands of dollars into it. And now I'm starting to get a few little grants. So so at this point, okay, so Mojave Land is nearby, is. right? And it's a 13-hole golf course. And there's a an old abandoned house there, which I use as a little gallery space. It has The, the property has no electricity or water. It wow. was abandoned 30 years ago. And so, but I do have a couple, I have a, a house and a little shed, which I store stuff in. And I have murals all over the, of the buildings and the kids. So what happens when they go to play, the families uh, play a round of golf, which takes 45 minutes or an hour. And then the kids play, uh, paint directly on the house. So oh, the so house they, is covered with murals. So they, yeah. they add to it all yeah. the time. Yeah, all I have a teaching changes. artist. Yeah, I have a teaching artist who leads them. So, and adults paint on it too. They love it. So, yeah. do, so do people pay to go there? And No, so that it really, it's, it yes. is totally free. Yeah. So I mean, you I just have a, I have a don donation can, oh, but good. you know, if they want to put in a couple bucks, they can. It's all completely free. And so then the city, um, started saying okay we've we've blocked you've we've turned the other cheek but now you're gonna have to start pay, you know paying attention to some rules so I'm like okay so I had to and I have always bought insurance so insurance is a big thing yeah you know that's, yeah, a, that's a cost yeah and um, I have a porta potty of course I have to pay that and you know the property taxes and then of course the construction I, I need I have a contractor who helps me I have always had a goal to pay the artists and I haven't been able to do that yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have that goal as a goal. Um, they, lo they loan me the art. So the work is, lo you know, is, it's there temporarily. If I ever shut down, I would scoop up the art and give it back to them. Mm -hmm. If somebody wanted to buy the art, could yeah. they? No, it's not for sale. It's just, it's just part of the installation of the piece, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. I like, for example, I had, it's funny because people will come and the, and the families that come with are like, oh, I want to play miniature golf. And a lot of the kids have never played golf before. They don't know how to hold, hold a club because this, this is a very rural place and the kids don't have a lot to do. Right. I, I would imagine that this would be a wonderful thing for the kids in they, this community. They love it. You know, give but, them something to do instead of getting, getting into trouble. Yeah. But sometimes peop, people will come by themselves <clears> and I'm like, I watch them. I'm like, hi, you going to play? Nope, nope. Just want to look around. I'm like, okay. And go enjoy, enjoy, take their camera. And then they come back. And I know they're artists and they're checking it out. And oh. they come back to me like, can I build something here? I'm like, yeah, you local? Yeah. And then so we <laughs> talk about it. And this one guy came, he's like, you don't have a windmill. And I'm like, I know. Okay. And he comes back two months, three months later. He okay. brings you a windmill? He's like, I've built it. Come <gasps> and see it. See if you like it. And I was like, amazing. It's like 13 feet tall and it spins. And this stuff makes yeah. makes the uh, my hair stand up on my arms and it makes me teary-eyed because uh, it's so joyous. You know what is. I mean? It is. And collaborative. And it's it's like people are getting it. Like they're figuring out this is this is like the best gorilla art 
Mm-hmm. I've, I've like heard about, you know, oh. planned gorilla art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so now what's happened is um, the city, the la- I, I got a temporary use permit. So I've had to start getting involved in politics because oh. of, of I'm sorry. understanding. Yeah. It's actually Maybe pretty it's okay. interesting to me. Um, I'm on the arts council now. Oh, the good. Art, the, the, so... That's really interesting. Um, the Public Arts um, Advisory Committee in Twenty Nine Palms, and um, so I'm learning all about. Poly- I just had to lobby the city council people about art, which was super interesting. So, how did that? What did that look like? Like, what does lobbying look like for you? How? I mean, did you just take them out to lunch and no? Try I, to I said, them? can I have a meeting with you? And we're trying to uh, convince them that spending money on public art is important. worthy and but they and these are they're all men at this point mm-hmm. um we had a we had a woman she just got knocked out of office but diverse that's mm-hmm. 29 palms is diverse in terms of ethnicity and that's good um it's like trying to explain to them in layman's terms why art matters right. and trying to figure out what they want to see you know like this um, is an interesting thought because, I mean, you and I both know how much art matters and mm-hmm. how much it shapes every facet of your life, whether you are paying attention to it or not. But trying to convince a bunch of gentlemen, we will say, you know, how, how it affected them and they don't even know how right. it affected them. Right. And they don't understand it and it feels elitist. And that's, so I have a big thing about, you know, of course I love going to museums and seeing crazy elitist art and understand, you know, conceptual art, but that's not for everybody. That's for a right. very small group right. of people. Not everybody and, learns that way or enjoys right. that way. And I like, that's <clears throat> why miniature golf, you know, I want to show parents. I'm actually trying to get to the parents because because it goes back to that community college thing of where you ask a you know a classroom of people who are in an art class how many of you are in art majors, and no one raises their hand. Right. And you say, well, why? My parents don't want me to. Art is going to make starve. And I'm like, ugh. You know. At the same time, I know that those kids are staying in college or staying in high school because of art or music. Right. Because not everybody plays sports, you know? It's basically like, how are you gonna get yourself to stay educated? Unless you have something that's like exciting you to stay in school. Right, right. If somebody put me in school and said, you can only stay in school because you live for history, I'd be out of there in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you so, live for ge- I mean, geology. No. I saw you. it very clearly. I, I think art saves lives. Absolutely. You know, just in the same way that sports saves lives. You know? I always think about this little saying from years ago, teach art, art teaches. Yeah. I mean, it it's yeah. gets all summed up. So, yeah, so, but basically what's happened with Mojave Land now is I wasn't able to get a second permit because oh. they, um, because I, I have some, found, some structural things that have to happen. Mm. So I've got to figure out if I can move forward with um, commercial development and commercial real estate development is crazy expensive. So, right, because it, it has public safety in mind, so it's oh, probably yeah. got a whole, ADA, whole new set of rules. ADA, <clears throat> I have to build roads, I have to underground utilities, I have to, unfortunately, the worst thing is a lot of cement, and covering the land with cement is a bad thing, but um, it, for, for many reasons, you know, cement's bad, Right, causes runoff, runoff causes flash floods here, you know, so runoff oh. is a huge problem. Thing that has to be en- engineered for I mean I know everything about like fire access and you know turn lanes and you know curb gutter how much easements and setbacks and all this sort of stuff it's sort of an amazing uh, education I'm I was gonna say it's a ho- whole new compartment yeah yeah so m- my pivot right now is I'll be taking Mojave land off of this property and having I can have only private events now but everyone's oh. invited so, oh. uh, but I can't advertise anymore. I um, see. Yeah, because I was being on the radio, and um, there's a radio, the local radio station and the newspaper and stuff like that. I can't do that anymore because it's not open to the public. So where are you going to move it? I have portable holes. Oh, so oh, I'm oh. going to be taking it. I t- last year I took it to 
So yes, some art galleries, but I was at the retreat center mm -hmm. one for an event. I have done several, and we have a new plaza in 29 Palms. There's a big farmer's market. I'm friends with that guy. He's like, anytime you want to come, Mom. Because I just roll out the, the um, holes, and it's brilliant because the kids can play and the parents can shop. Right. It's exactly what you want. You know, keep the kids happy. Yeah. Let them have fun. Have a little art table on the side so that they're doing something artistic and the parents are like, they love it. Do you wonder about this venture and like where it's going to take you? I don't know. Tez says I'm going to be on the city council, but I, I will not ever be on the city council. But it is funny. <laughs> it is very funny to, to be sort of involved with city politics now. I just, I, I'm some, I don't know about you, but sometimes I start doing something and I'm like, I, I don't understand why I'm doing it. I'm, I'm enjoying it, mm -hmm. but I'm like, it's leading somewhere, but I don't know where that, that place is. Right. And I, I sort of feel like, I mean, there's an intention here, but it looks like it could veer off into a different, a different episode at any moment. And I think that that's something that are like, uh, both artists need to know, like, follow, follow that pivoting, but also, like, they talk about that in business all the time. You know, like, you don't know what's going to happen. You right. need to pivot Should, because yeah. maybe things change. Right. The economy changes. Your, your target audience changes. You know, I just looked at this place, the potential of this place with the park. So the Joshua Tree National Park is a very new park. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, it had a million visitors. Now it has 3 million visitors I know. a year. And so I just was like, so they get out of the park. Not everybody is camping in the park because there's not enough spaces. And what do, they, what do you do? You land in 29 Palms and what do you do if you have a family? And you, right. you want to have fun. I have a lot of, mostly adults come to play. You know, it's not all families. Right. Of so, course. Yeah, so. It's crazy. Woo! It's a crazy life. Yeah. It's sometimes... Um, yeah, so the, it's a the good financial ride. risk is a little scary. Yeah. Because um, I am taking some financial risks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. if you just told me that you just poured thousands of dollars Lots. into Mojave Land and, and now you, you know, you really, you've got to pour thousands more if you want to get it to where you oh, no, thought it was going to go. Millions. I need several million. Millions. <laughs> millions more. That's a whole new yeah. story. No, I know. Uh, that probably won't. That that's that's highly highly probably not going to happen. But but we'll see. I don't feel like we saw any of your art other than that mm -hmm. little piece. Do you have anything else that you can show us? Here do I? You know what? I don't hang my own art in my own house. You don't? I don't. Mm -mm. God, my heart no. house is stuffed with it as mm -hmm. well as well as everybody else's. Yeah, I have a lot of other people's art. I still um, I still do life drawing and mm -hmm. life painting. Well. Every couple of weeks, there's a little local group, oh, good. and I do that. Um, yeah, um, nope, don't have any. Then I mean, you can go to my my website. I will. And I have I will a website. Post, yeah. I will post all this stuff. All yeah. right, let's see what else we got. We, Laura, Question. Laura says here. Wait a minute before I go to Laura. Oh, there are some questions here. Oh. The, um. Maybe Anna has pieces at Joshua Tree Retreat Center. It's a I wonderful do. place to visit. Yes, she does, everybody. Do you know Sandy Garcia? Oh, Georgia says she can't hear a lot of what you're saying. I'm sorry, I don't have the mics oh. with me. But hopefully, I don't know, I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, Laura's saying, can we see some more examples of her art? Hmm. Um, Clifton says, on cafe, I saw, see a lot of requests for public outdoor art. It's encouraging, yet I want to see much more. Lack of art is an insidious form of starvation. Absolutely. LaDonna says, can you get some contractors to donate time and supplies as a tax write-off? Well, up here, contractors are very hard to come by because there is this Airbnb building boom. Um, right. So I did find a contractor who is so creative and if I can get him <laughs> even to come to help me it's a miracle um my you know I do have people who are helping me um uh and they charge me very little but I would never ask them to do something for free no it's it's a hard thing too mm -hmm. in this city um no. there's it's there's a lot of growth potential here and I I feel like people are 
dying to make money <laughs> in in a good way. You know, yeah, like because there's this, a, this is a very under um, served community, yeah. economically disadvantaged. Um, nobody, there's no wealthy. There's like not not no. not a wealthy class here. No. no. Okay, Laura says, sounds like she has experience taking chances and risking without knowing where it will lead. Why not city council? Would, would, hold on, would, wouldn't it be great if a true artist was a council member and you wouldn't have to worry about lobbying and convincing? You'd be on the inside. <laughs> think about it. I think that's a really good point. Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> good point, Laura. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, who knows? Who knows? I, I, I don't know if uh, the average person would vote for me, and that, and that's really, uh, you know, yeah, really, yeah. Somebody did ask me to run, and I was like, no way, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I right don't now. know. I would maybe keep that like right here. Yeah. You never know what'll happen, and I, I, you know what? You might be surprised about people voting for you or not voting for you. But you know, I also have a very healthy respect for people who have a, a broader understanding. My expertise is pretty narrow. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's basically, um, you know, art and, you know, our, so the, what we're doing with, on the, 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 on the committee right now is we're, we're all new, the old guard uh, retired who were running the art program here in 29 Palms and they were basically um, focused on murals and public sculpture and we tr we said well you know what we're not going to do that because that doesn't make sense every all the art because it has to be maintained and they right. have no understanding that oh. where's the budget to maintain all of these sculptures that we have in 29 Palms and all these murals that are fading and cracking and you know, weathering and probably graffiti over. We don't have graffiti here, oh, that's actually. Good. But oh, that's um, good. yeah, so they didn't understand that. So we're trying to explain to them: okay, temporary art, it, pay the artists. So they had they kept on doing all the artists have donated stuff for free, and we're like, no freaking way, no more free yeah. art. We do not ask. We're not going to ask anybody yeah. to perform for free or make for make anything for free or design for free. No. So pay everybody. And then um, expand the idea of public art into more temporal, performative, performative things that would be include dance, theater, literary arts, you know, readings, lectures, and yes, of course, some visual art, but everything's temporary. See, it's so smart though, because then that makes it so that people need to come back because it's mm -hmm. always changing. The yeah. work is fleeting. Yeah. You know, there, you can't depend on it being here forever and ever and right. ever. I think that's a really good way to go. Yeah, and the city, that's what the city council wants to hear, that art leads to tourism. Right. You know, and art brings money into, tax money into the, the ba you know, the town and the basin. So, yeah, and, you know, just trying to keep this unique feel one of the things that's really cool about the Morongo Basin, about Joshua Tree and Yucca and, and 29, the towns here, is the art looks very different than the art down in Palm Springs in right. the Coachella Valley, mm -hmm. which is very influenced by modernism. And it's a whole different mindset very, down yes, there, though, too. Yes, it's very abstract. It's much slicker. It's much more pop art. And up here, we're all looking at Noah Purifoy picking up the trash, picking up the things, not, you know, we don't have lawns here. There are no green, there's no green lawns. Right. And you go down to Palm Springs and it's like, right. green. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, so, but it's fun to see the art is different. Yeah. Well, the people are so different though, too. Yeah. I mean, the people in Palm Springs are much more touristy, much more polished in a way, mm -hmm. um, more citified you know, less likely to be aware. And, and I don't, and I don't, that's not, of course, mm -hmm. across the board, right. but I mean, you're right. average, you know, they, yeah. they're just treating it like it's, the water is forever, the electricity is forever, nothing's going to change here, let's, let's dump some more top, toxins, you know, who cares about our trash? I mean, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, we're, we're much more environmentalists up here. That and but that's not completely across the board. No, you know, no. And there are no, they are is. ripping up the lawns in Palm Springs. <clears throat> I don't know about some of the other desert cities. Yeah, all those golf courses. Yeah, and yeah. it's hotter down there because of all that grass. Oh really? Here. Yeah. Ooh. It's muggier think, and hotter. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That totally makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to close this up. Let's see. I'll send okay. a few. Car Clifton says I'll send a few pieces to get it started on loan, but no cost. <laughs> 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 you deal with Anna on that. Or Anna on that one. I'm going to stay out of this. <laughs> All right. Go I on. do. I do encourage people though, if they're interested in public art, you know, to start. Um, you know, looking at a lot of public art and then, you know, I don't think anybody gets rich from public art though. No, you know, well, I've, I've had friends. I don't who, know. There's yeah, some people in LA that, that are, are doing, doing well. big, do, yeah. do big public art projects, yeah. you know, and just come up with a concept and then hire everybody to do everything else. And, yeah. yeah. You know, they are, they're doing okay. Okay, good. Yeah. I, hear it. I don't know if I like what they're doing, but you mm. know, they're doing okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, any parting words and, and, uh, for, for my group people, we need to be keep the going, the don't get discouraged. And you know, if you have any questions for me, like if you have an, uh, you know, if you have an idea for something business oriented, I, you know, I'm completely willing to help, you know, oh, I, you're so sweet. I, I, you know, that's sort of what I've always thought about doing is just like it, helping people, you know, like. Make a business plan. That's that's something that people need to do. Yeah. And even if it's just for yourself, you just say, "Who am I making this for? Is it for me? Is there is there an audience that I'm thinking about? You know, and and that's that's important. And right. Who would you know, come? Who would participate? Mm -hmm. Who would yeah. do this? And and not everybody has has to. I think that it's. I think sometimes people have this idea that it would be great if I earned all my money. From art and I don't know I, I you know I, mean, it, I guess it's it's admirable I don't even know if that's the right word for it I mean I guess it's a very thing. few people do it though. I know you know most people you dig a little bit and though they're teaching on the side right or they have a, a rental somewhere you know I have a rental right and that allowed me to be able to retire I know I know of a couple people that do that and only that and they work very hard at it and they're very they have a plan. They have a game mm -hmm, plan, mm -hmm. and they're very regimented about how they do yeah. things. Yeah, and and realizing, oh, the art making is only a very small percentage, right? Of, you know, marketing and keeping your tax like ta tax season right now, and right. I'm like freaking out. Like my my bookkeepers like, uh, where's your information? I need to send out the ten ninety nines. I'm like, oh my god. Right, you gotta get, get it all together. Well, that hopefully yeah. gets easier as you move along, you know, and you get used to the rhythm of that because finding the rhythm of that is really hard yeah. at first. Yeah. It, it just seems so overwhelming, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine. But anyway, reach out to me, you know, follow me, I, you know, at either at Anna Stump, Am Stump, A M Stump. Um, I'll, on put, Instagram, I'll put all your stuff and then on, on, I'll put it up there yeah. so that they can get a hold of yeah. you. And I have, I have some um, YouTube. Um, and you're stuff. on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon. Oh, I you're on, I you have a, a Patreon. I have, I have Patreon. So people who are follow, you know, helping me uh, do all my projects and they get inside, insider Insider info, insider, <laughs> insider tips. I have to actually uh, write them. Yeah. I mean, I follow some I just support some, right. some people too. Of course. You know, that's a lovely thing to do. Of course. Yeah. All right. I saw something else. I, I, I see, um, Clifton says, I need my art in a few commercial spaces. That's all. You're, you're there. Clifton's got, uh, uh, talk to her, yeah. talk to her about you later, Clifton. Um, LaDonna says, you can contact me at any time. I'm planning on opening a small gallery tattoo shop in town in Arkansas. You contact Anna, LaDonna. <laughs> she can't keep track of everybody. Uh, Carmen says, I need to check in Florida. And why, oh, and Kathleen says, why didn't she bring some of her art? Really thought that was stupid. I'm sorry. That's not nice, Kathleen. <laughs> here, let me have that piece for you. <laughs> there was, she's at home and she doesn't keep it here. She's got a studio and stuff, but here's a piece in case you missed it. She works on found objects sometimes, and this is a piece of a spade, you know, for gardening. 
and she paints on it. So there you go. All right. With that being said, we're going to close this up. Thank you so much for being here and um, have a beautiful day. And I will talk to you all next week. Bye guys. Bye.